So last time we, uh, we, we learned how to relate the representation of a vector with respect to B to the representation of the same vector with respect to D. So naturally the check-in asks us to do exactly that. So let's have a look. Let's see. So uh, I'm going to do an example that involves, uh, uh, whoops, what happened? Did it? Yeah, that involves 3 plus 2x plus x squared. So uh, V uh, is 3 plus 2x plus x squared, 3, 2, 1. And it's a member of the, uh, uh, the space of polynomials, quadratic polynomials. Um, and uh, B1 is, it's a 1, 1 plus x, 1 plus x squared. Use that basis a lot, just as an example of a basis that's not too hard and not too easy. And B2, again, another example of a basis that's not too hard and not too easy. X squared, X squared minus 1. And X squared, oh, X squared minus X, forgive me. X squared minus X. X squared minus X plus 1. Sorry about that. And the first question asks me to represent this vector with respect to B1 and B2. So the representation with respect to B1. So I just have to figure out here, I'll write uh, 3 plus 2x plus x squared. And I got to figure out how many 1s, how many 1 plus x's, and how many 1 plus x squared does it take to represent, to, to, to get that total. Okay, we've seen this before. There's, uh, there's only one x squared on the left-hand side, and there's only one x squared on the right-hand side, so I need for the coefficients to be the same. There's only one x on the left-hand side, only one x on the right-hand side, so I need for the coefficients to be the same. And then what are the, what's the story with the constants? So 1 plus 2 is 3, and I have a 3 over here, so I don't need any of those. So uh, just, because, uh, just because I could do it by Gauss's method doesn't mean I should. I can just eyeball the answer. The representation with respect to B1 of the, of the vector uh, V, 3 plus 2x plus x squared, is, uh, it's got to get them in order, 0, 2, 1. Likewise for the other one. The representation with respect to B2 of, of V, well, 3 plus 2x plus x squared, and that's uh, how many x squareds? How many x squared minus x? And how many x squared minus x plus 1? So, uh, again, I'm going to eyeball it. I see there's only one constant on the right-hand side, so I need that to be a 3. Uh, once that's a 3, I have minus 3x, and so I need for the number of x's to be minus 5. That way, minus 5 times minus 1 makes positive 5. Added to minus 3 gives me the 2. And then lastly, what's the story with the x squared? I have 3x squared minus 5x squared. I need a total of 1x squared, so I need a 3 there. So again, I could do Gauss's method, but I'm able to eyeball the answer, so I eyeballed the answer. So the representation with respect to B2 of the vector V, 3 plus 2x plus x squared. Just wrote it in a different way. I don't just to, just to write it in a different way. 3 minus 5, 3. 3. 3. All right, and then for the second part, I want to represent the, uh, how do you convert from the one to the other? How do you convert representations with respect to B1 to representations with respect to B2? And of course, we saw last time, the result from last time was that if you draw the picture right, then the maps tell you what to do. So B1 comma B2 of uh, the identity map. So you ask yourself, uh, what happens to the first basis vector under the identity map? I know it's silly, but I'm trying to be consistent. What happens to the second basis vector under the identity map? And what happens to the third basis vector under the identity map? I won't do it for the rest of the semester, but just, ju just, to, just to make the point. And then you represent, with respect to B2, each of the, the 1, the 1 plus x, and the 1 plus x squared. And 
and I get here uh, 0 minus 1, 1. I got here uh, 1 minus 2, 1. And I got here uh, 1 minus 1, 1. If you can read my handwriting. So I smushed them, or the three of them together into a matrix, and that's the answer. Just, uh, just to check, uh, I'm going to check that it converts the one to the other. So let's have a whack. 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Minus 1, minus 2, minus 1, and 1, 1, 1. So that's what happened when I smushed that column with that column with that column, when I concatenated those three columns together. And I'm going to check that if you multiply by 0, 2, 1, do you indeed get what I'm hoping to get? 3 minus 5, 3. And uh, let's see, so 0, 1, 1, dot product with 0, 2, 1, and you can see that that's a 3. Minus 1, minus 2, minus 1, dot product with 0, 2, 1. Boy, those zeros sure are convenient, aren't they? So minus 2 times 2 makes minus 4, minus 1, so you get a total of minus 5, and boy, you know, you know, it's certainly going to work out. 1, 1, 1, sure, 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 sure. So that checks. Okay, all right, very good. All right, so we, uh, we, did, we did vectors, so surely what happens next is maps. Do the exact same thing only, only with maps, that's all. So, uh, so in we go. Again, it's a matter of understanding that if you've paid attention to the map, if you've looked for the meaning in the situation, instead of just blindly saying, well, there must be, a, must be a linear system here somewhere, I'll just write down the correct linear system and chug away. If you look for the meaning of the system, it, it, it all makes perfectly beautiful sense. So I want to convert the representation of, of the map H with respect to BD over to the representation of the same map H with respect to some different, maybe the same, I suppose, B hat, D hat. So down here we see we see the appropriate diagram. Let me take you through the parts. Here's the representation with respect to B comma D of this map lowercase h is of course the matrix capital H. We've done that lots of times before. On the bottom row, here I have the map H again, takes you from capital V to capital W, but now I'm representing it with respect to different bases, V B hat and D hat. So naturally, I expect to get a different matrix, H hat. How do you connect the top row to the bottom row? Well, we saw that last time. Here, you're changing the representation of a vector with respect to B to the, rep to the same vector with respect to B hat. And over here, you're changing a, base, you're changing a vector W with, represented with respect to, to, to D to, this, to the representation of the same vector, W, lowercase w, with respect to some different d hat. So this picture tells you, in terms of the map, what's happening here. When you think about what the meaning is, then it, then it becomes much clearer than if you try to set up elaborate linear systems. You can set up elaborate linear systems, but the meaning makes it much, much stri more straightforward. All right, so where, where the heck are we? Well, we want to find h hat. We're given h. We want to convert from capital H over to capital h hat. So we want to find h hat. So if you're given h, you, then you can use it in some calculation. So I want to find h hat. I want to move from the lower left to the lower right. And so I'm going to take the following. I'm going to move, instead of lower left to lower right directly, instead I'm going to go up. I know I'm swimming against the ID arrow there, but we'll see what to do. You go up, you go over, and you go down. And again, we can go over because we already have capital H. We started with capital H. We're trying to compute capital H hat. Okay, so the two ways that this diagram gives you to compute capital H hat is by either writing down B hat and D hat and, and H and figuring out what is the representation of lowercase h with respect to B hat and D hat, or else you can go up, over, and down. Okay? Okay. Okay, so uh, the down part over here on the right-hand side, we already saw that last time. You start with uh, vectors in capital W. You end with vectors in capital W. So you're looking at this here. You're taking a, ve a vector, lowercase w, to itself. So that's the identity map. Good, 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 good. I'm going to represent the identity map with respect to the starting basis of B and, end it with, and uh, ending basis of D hat. So starting basis of D, ending basis of D hat. So this part is familiar from last time. Over here, aren't you going against the arrow? 
Well, kind of. You see, the identity map takes little v to little v. So I drew the arrow from top to bottom for reasons that don't matter, but, but don't matter here. But you, I could have drawn it in the other direction. I'm simply looking to take the identity map also going up. I'm representing little v maps to itself, little v. So this is the representation of the identity map with respect to b hat b. So to go up, over, and down, you first do b hat b, identity map. You see it on the right-hand side. You've got to get the order right. Next, you do h, like it says on the top line. And next, you come down again. So d, d hat of the identity map. The proof says it's evident from the diagram. I recognize that the diagram sometimes takes a little getting used to. But that's why we have a couple of examples to work through. Whenever I do one of these problems, just as a tip, Whenever I do one of these problems, I write the diagram every time. If I write the diagram, I find I get them correct. If I don't write the diagram, all hell breaks loose. So I write the diagram. All right, so of course, uh, our goal here is to try to make the abstract stuff, like this diagram, concrete by working through a number of examples. So here we go with the first example. Uh, one of my favorite maps is the derivative map that takes you from the quadratic polynomials to the quadratic polynomials. It could take you to the linear polynomials, but I happen to have written the codomain as the quadratic polynomials because I want to write v and v. Here's a basis. Here's a basis. I could, of course, calculate the representation of the, of the derivative map with respect to b, comma, d. I could also calculate the representation of the derivative map with respect to b hat, comma, d hat. So I can find those, the representation with respect to b comma d and the representation with respect to b hat comma d hat. And, uh, uh, and it, it's all you know routine stuff. I mean, a little bit dull, but we've done it before. It's all routine. What about the going up and over? Previous slide says to go, to go up, you want to go from b hat to b. So you got to keep the, that's why I write the diagram. You got to keep the bookkeeping right. You want to go from b hat to b. So that's what I got here from b hat to b. And then the other one is to go from d to d hat. And again, I write the diagram to keep the bookkeeping straight, but I think I got the bookkeeping straight, d to d hat. Here's the b hat to b. Here's the capital H. Here's the d to d hat. And when you multiply these three together, a person needs, needs to check this, of course, but when you multiply these three together, you should get that. And it isn't some accident of the way the numbers combine. It's because it means something. There's another example of exactly the same thing. This is the uh, ordinary rotation of plane vectors counterclockwise pi over 6 radians, so 30 degrees. And uh, we've, we've done this before, but it doesn't matter. It's not too hard to calculate that the representation with respect to the standard basis of, of rotation counterclockwise by pi over 6 radians is this. I want to translate that to a representation with respect to this basis here. So again, I, I, I don't want to, you know, don't, don't want to sound like I think everybody is a dope, but I want to sound like it's a good tip. Draw the diagram. It will make sense in a way that memorizing the things doesn't make sense. So when you draw the diagram, what you get is, on top, is the representation with respect to the standard basis. On the bottom is the representation with respect to the other basis. I know that the last problem I called this b hat and d hat, and now I'm calling it b and d. You know, get over it. Identity map, identity map. The whole diagram makes sense to move from lower left here to up, to over, to down. To get from to get h hat, we move from the from the we move from the it says upper left, but it's supposed to say lower left. I apologize. Move from the lower left up, over, and then down. But it didn't fit on the slide, so here we go. With respect to the standard basis, it's pretty easy to 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 figure out how to move up. So back again. So representation, to how do you get up? Representation of the identity map with respect to b, comma, e2. There it is. And again, I'll have to let you take out a pencil and do the calculation. I've done it a lot. The matrix for moving down. Oh, I went the wrong way. Darn it all. 
matrix for moving down is the representation E E2 comma D. Now B and D are the same. Happens a lot in practice. B and D that, that B and that, that and that D are the same. So in fact, to go up is the opposite of to go down. So you could calculate down separately, but you could also observe that that it's simply the inverse matrix because it just goes in the other direction. So the representation B E2 is 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 there to find the representation E2 comma comma you could call it B or you could call it D. You can take the one I just calculated and find the inverse. We have a formula for inverse, so there it is. So I saved myself a little work and I wouldn't have really remarked it except that it comes up an awful lot. All right, so here we go. Do this calculation and you get the familiar answer from before. See, there's the three halves. Whoops. There's the three halves, the minus one half, the one half, and the, squ and the square, square root of three over two, minus one half, one half, and square root of three over two. There it is, square root of three over two, minus one half, one half, square root of three over two. When you do all the calculation, you get this for the representation with respect to B comma D of the rotation. So there's the familiar one from before. Here's the two matrices that I just calculated, and there's the answer. Okay, so it does seem to me this is, uh, I'm skipping past the, the special case here and going to the general case. It does seem to me that this is, uh, this is memorizable. That uh, writing these down every time you do this problem will make the problem make sense in a way that the formulas, uh, I'm not embarrassed about formulas, but, but if you write that down, the, then the formula that's down at the bottom of the page makes all the sense in the world. Okay, what did I do? There we go. Okay. Okay, so ready to close here is that we will call two same size matrices H and H hat. We'll call the matrix equivalent if you can translate from the one to the other. All right. So, uh, so a person should uh, should practice a few of these now. So, uh, so uh, then we'll come back and talk some more about uh, changing map representations. Okay, very good. Bye bye.